And so we're going to take a trip. And let me show you how well the link works. Because some of y'all don't believe it. Because I know why you don't believe it, and I wouldn't believe it either. All these other people talking about, hey, here's a link. I'm putting a link underneath the video, and you go and you get some spam mail. Ain't no viruses here. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a checklist of everything you need to do in an appeal brief. Right here. These are the documents. Now, I got a story I'm going to tell you. Uh, not about, uh, you know, Uncle Jed or none, none of them, you know, uh, Buddy Epson, uh, Beverly Hillbillies. Ladies and gentlemen, the story I'm going to tell you is there's a young man that I did a consult with. As a matter of fact, we've done two consults over the last five years. He consulted with me in 2018, and then he consulted again with me in 2021. And when we had this consult, I've actually kept in touch with him. Because he's all right. You know, as a person, he is all right. Plus, he he's able to take what I say in stride, and he doesn't let what I say to him get to him. It doesn't bother him because he understands that the information I'm giving him is for his benefit. So, I, I, I man, I go off on him because, Lord have mercy, nobody should have to go through what he puts me through. All right. Well, that being said, ladies and gentlemen, he went to court because they're evicting him. He, when he did his consult, they had already had a foreclosure. So I was trying to come up with ways for him to stay in the house and challenge the foreclosure and bring a claim of unlawful foreclosure. He said he'd already done that. Now, I didn't ask him what he had done and the paperwork he had done. I figured he knew what he was doing because he had already done that. You know what I mean? But what he was doing is picking up a bunch of rocks and pebbles and magnets and pieces of glass and shards and kitchen sinks and bathtubs and everything, and then throwing it at him. Yeah, take that, mother. You know, that's what he was doing. And so we had our consult, and I told him, okay, this is what you need to do. You need to do this. You need to do that. And then he told me, he says, my hearing is on Monday. He told me this on Friday. I said, Monday? Oh, God, you that, that's too soon, you know, because I needed a couple of days in order to prepare him what to say. And so I went over what to say and the documents he needed to prepare. And he goes there on Monday and he gets a letter from the judge saying, hey, there won't be a hearing today. We're going to postpone that hearing and we're going to take it until the 4th of January. New Year! And he was kind of proud that everything worked out. I actually got on his case because he was supposed to have been filing bankruptcy because I told him that the judge was going to be issuing a judgment against him because. More than likely, he had, he was involved in an unlawful detainer. Unlawful detainers, they're, they're not looking for your evidence. They're looking to see whether or not you can prove you have a right to be in that property. And because you went through foreclosure, you don't have a right to be in a property. That's all the judge is concerned with. So I got off the phone with him because he hadn't done what I had suggested he'd do. Now, he doesn't have to do what I suggest. But here's the thing. I'm trying to save his property. And I told him, here I am worried about you and worried about your property and you're not showing the same concern? People, shame on all of you who do that. Well, he was he received the call later from me today and I called him back to let him know. I said, do you know why the judge postponed your case? He says, no. I said, because it's Christmas time, and they don't want to throw anybody out of their homes during Christmas. Ladies and gentlemen, the other reason why the judge postponed the hearing is because the moratorium issued by the federal government ends on the, I think it's the 28th or 31st of this month. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. They evicted him during the moratorium. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. All loans are federal loans because they're through the Federal Reserve System. All loans are federal federal loans. The Federal Reserve is not part of the federal government, but however, they're deemed one and the same as the federal government according to their so-called case law. Okay, yes, I'm saying case law as in Cole's law because that junk ain't nobody's law. 
Well, I told him a couple of things he can do to make sure that that judge understand that <laughs> it ain't going to work the way he thought it was going to work. And I told him what he needed to do in order to correct the record because he was there under an assumption. Now he needs to make the assumption the correct thing. So he's going to take care of it. I can't give you guys the strategy because he hasn't done it yet. And so I don't want anybody handing him off at the path. And I do want it to be a surprise. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Okay. So I wanted to explain that to you to let you guys know about the courts. Look, I don't have all the answers. I promise you, I do not have all the answers. My job, the way I live my life, is my job is to figure a way out. My job is to be given a unwinnable situation, unwinnable scenario, and figure my way out. Okay, it's just literally that simple. That's what I do. So, ladies and gentlemen, showing you that the documents are up, we talked about a young man who they're attempting to foreclose on, and uh, I'm going to do what I can to stop him from foreclosing. As I said, I usually promise I don't do templates, so I've got a way around that. I've done templates for you all, but I'm also doing templates to help the people who I told them I wouldn't do any templates for them. Uh, so, and I did promise that I would put out the appeal templates because many of you need to go back in and ask for reconsideration, especially you arbitration people. Okay. You really need to understand how valid those arbitration agreements are according to the law. Not according to no judge, but according to the law, how valid the agreements are. Okay. All I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, is there are a couple of agreements that I have had to look at that were not agreements. They were not even unilateral agreements. Because the individuals who were sending them think they knew more about what the law says an agreement is and what they're saying an agreement is. So those of you who have proper agreements, those of you who follow the Bradley Christopher Stark model, please understand we will be going before the Supreme Court. I was hoping to get that done by the end of this year, but we're working on the tax credits, ladies and gentlemen, and we are actively working on the tax credits for all of you. I have been behind because I've had to redo the main computer that I use. And with that being the case, that put my team a week and a half behind. Sorry about that, but things have to be done right. And the only problem is I'm the only one who can do this stage of it because this is the CEO's job. So I can't pander it off to someone else. That it, because of what it entails, I can't tell you what it's about. Man, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we are working on that. And this is me letting you know that we're working on that. And I promise you, it's not my job to even come close to letting you guys down. That would bother me too much. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to go to sleep because it's been a long day. Look at that, 9 o'clock. I was going to say it was 8 o'clock, but Lord have mercy. That's how time has been flying and getting by me the last two days. Got to go. Y'all take care. Okay? Stay out of them troubles. Goodbye.